nice to meet you all. I'm Ariana. I was just talking to Alexandra. I was saying happy one year anniversary to you too. Oh, thank you. And I watched the entire first season within a day. It was genuinely so good. (laughs) I loved it. You know, those shows that like you watch and it's funny, but you don't like laugh out loud, but you're, you're, you still think it's funny and you're having a good time. I laughed so hard on like the most crazy moments, like when uh, Jeremy keeps forgetting to get the toilet paper. Just, <laughs> it's just such a mess. So, like, I just, I, I love the show. But how did it even come about? Because you guys are literally doing this all on your own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, this journey started a while back. Um, I think we we've all had some experience with um, you know being on a TV show that was more or less a hit, um, you know, and then you're on that show when you're young and you think that life's going to be like that forever. And then the show goes away and you kind of have to figure out, you know, who you are again. And there's a lot of comedy that comes from that. Um, Like one of the things someone told me young that always stuck with me was that you, uh, you stop maturing the moment that you become famous. Um, And I always thought that was really funny and kind of tracked with uh, experiences that I had and, you know, personally, and also just stories that you hear um, things that you see. And, um, and so, you know, we just kind of thought there was a lot of comedy in the situation that we were, we found ourselves in coming out of One Tree Hill, you know, coming out of the Royals, coming out of H2O, where you're like, all right, that was great. Um, but I was living in a sort of fantasy land there for a while. All my dreams were coming true. And now here we are back in the real world. Um, and, and, you know, what does that mean? Like, how much have I grown up? How much have I not grown up? And how, does that bump up against, you know, the real world and, and the things that life throws at you? So, um, you know, ultimately, I'm glad to hear that you said that because I think, you know, it's got an industry backdrop, this show, but we really wanted it to be relatable to anyone who has had a curveball thrown at them in life or has had the rug pulled out from under them. Um, and, you know, we really felt like leaning on those little moments, those little relatable moments were um, going to give people a great window into like access to these people's lives. Yes. And what would you say that you were influenced by? Because it's definitely a show that stands on its own, but it's giving a bit curb your enthusiasm. Jeremy reminds me of BoJack Horseman just because of (laughs) substance abuse issues. Like what were some of your influences going in when making the show? Oh man, there was a bunch of different influences. You know, I think um, early on in conversations, you know, I feel like there's like kind of a common uh, comedic sensibility in a way of some shows that, you know, James and I would, would discuss that we would watch that would be really fun to work on uh, that we wouldn't normally try to, we don't normally see those kind of opportunities. They're not really coming down the pipeline too often for us. So I feel like um, through that and, and talking about some, you know, a certain tone that we're trying to, to strike with the show uh, and then also the way that the show is shot Um so, I mean, you know, I feel like early on we, t- we talked about like light crazy was one of the ways, the way it's shot where it's kind of giving you a feel like you're, you're peeking around the corner. Um, it's of course all handheld uh, and it kind of gives it a little bit more of that voyeuristic feel to it, um, which we, we think adds, you know, um, to really making it feel raw and, and real in, in a way, um, you know, not, not so glossed over as you see, you know, a lot of TV shows, this should have a lot more of a raw kind of indie feel to it. Um, yeah. So the trip was another one of them. I yeah. mean, I, like, you know, there's some, uh, some, some British shows um, out there that really, really influenced us and also Australian shows. I mean, like Alex, Kruby, you guys can speak to that, right? Like the shows that we yeah. do there. Yeah. I think we all just, you know, all, all four of us, um, you know, once we all sort of came together, it's, we, we've all got a very specific taste in what we watch on TV and it was interesting to see, you know, whether it was the influence coming from Australia or if it was in the States, there were all these kind of shows that just sort of made you feel like you were really hanging out with people, you know, as opposed to just watching a show that is very much a show. We wanted, you know, these are the shows that we grew up on, shows that you probably you guys probably wouldn't know, but, um, you know, shows that made you feel like you're part of the gang and that you're, you can relate immediately to just the absurdity of these characters' lives and what they're going through and, um yeah so it was it was cool that we all were on the same boat with that and 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 wanting yeah like what Stephen was saying we wanted to make something that 
we wanted to create characters in a show that that we weren't seeing opportunities to play in the regular way things go um you know playing a cop on a show that's you know it's something you know what I mean it's like we wanted yeah. to play real people with real issues who um uh you know kind of stand out from the rest so yeah it, and it's interesting we didn't you know we didn't set out to make a a curb your enthusiasm type show you know it was really like um, you know, trying to create real intimate uh, moments that, you, you know, that, that felt kind of more real um, and, and using a lot of improv and that style. I know they use a lot of improv, of course, in, in Kirby Enthusiasm. So I think that's where the connection starts to come. Uh, but, it, you know, early on when we were showing some friends and uh, honestly getting some feedback from some people, um, you know, people were mentioned that it was like, it's kind of like a curb for millennials. And we're like, you know what? We'll take it. If people want to say, then we'll, we'll live in that space. Yeah. That sounds really fun <laughs> to us because honestly, if, yeah, if you do take a step back and look at it, you're like, you know what? We are kind of living this life. That's like a curb your enthusiasm, but you know, in a different generation. Yeah. I also like about the show and what makes it feel more real is I feel like a lot of times on shows, there has to be like this complete growth or like a montage of change. But a lot of times with the characters, just to be frank, it's like the same shit. Like no one is growing or changing. <laughs> it's like the like, Simpsons, right? They've been yeah. the same age for 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> like they're taking a step pain. forward. And then just so many steps back, which is honestly very much real life and what I liked about the show. Um, another scene that I wanted to talk about that I felt like must have happened to you or the girls definitely had this conversation was kind of Aussie culture and like how you just can't call people little bitches because like <laughs> it doesn't translate at all American like how did that scene come about? <laughs> You want to answer that, James? <laughs> uh, well, Alex called me a little bitch, and uh, I was very offended. <laughs> and she thought it was hilarious. And I was like, "What is going?" It was, it was actually early on in our relationship. Very early on. Um, and there was just like a real disconnect in like how like seriously I actually took it, and how she actually meant it. And um, yeah. and we always just like that's just one of those moments that we look back on and always thought that was funny. And um, and that's the beauty of. The way that we shoot this show is uh i don't even think that that was in the scripts that we wrote for that particular episode it was just sort of became part of the banter um between alex and kariba um and it was just in like one take at the very end like a tag they're walking out of frame and fortunately we we caught it you know um and and those are just the little moments that you go mining for with this show and the edit um uh that that i think make it feel very spontaneous and very real and off the cuff um yeah yeah so seth is a bit more straight laced and jeremy is just like this beautiful mess is that i assume James, that you are not this mess because you couldn't make this show. You it, This just wouldn't be possible. <laughs> but would you say you're a bit more laid back and you, Steven, are a bit more straight-laced? Oof. Um, I mean, I will say, like, I don't know about those particular character traits in general, but I will say that from the beginning, all of us, um, this is one of the things we discussed was, like, let's take inspiration from you know let's let's be comfortable leaning into like who we are and the way that we carry ourselves a little bit you know um and in that way that gives us a good foundation a good natural organic foundation and then from there we can jump off into the more extreme sort of elements of our characters um and and so you know uh that's the that's part there's been part of the conversation from the beginning so you know i, I mean i would say personally for me, there have been times in my life when I would have been considered a loafer. You know, there have been times in my life before, maybe when, you know, I felt like things were coming easy to me and they always would be where I, I wasn't too, I wasn't worried at all about what was coming next or preparing myself for what was coming next or, or thinking about much more than I had to in any given moment. And so it was really about, for me, like tapping back into that person. Who is that guy? And what if you, you know, amped that up to an almost absurd level and, and he continued to be that way, um, past in, well past an age where it's appropriate, <laughs> you know? Yes. And the show within the show is about vampires. And you guys have all been on very much iconic shows. There could have been one, uh, like a spoof on One Tree Hill, Laguna Beach, which broke my heart at age 17, <laughs> H2O, or even the Royals. Why did you guys decide to do this vampire show within the show? Hmm. You want to take that one? 
Uh, no, you go, Stevie. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I'm very simply, you know, there is something, um, you know, on the uh, the appearance side of it. You know, uh, obviously wearing um, makeup for a vampire, having some fangs. We felt like there would be something. Uh, you know, there's something comedic attached to that where you know down the line if we see pictures of ourselves from say one tree hill or the royals like you're like you know it's like oh wow that was you know a long time ago like that's just like young bucks back then but if we had you know fangs and there was blood dripping from our life it would add i think an extra layer of humor uh so you know it really came from that um that it's it's you know again we like to play with the absurdity in life in this world that we happen to find ourselves in um and i think when you you know, take vampires in, into effect there, it, it takes it to another level, so. Yeah, and the They're vampires all... really had their moment as well, you know. They did, like, yeah. Yeah, so. And there were so many vampire shows going on and, and mermaid shows and cop shows. Like we have, <laughs> so in season two, we go, we actually go into um to more of the shows. So it's pretty cool. We go into Eternal, the vampire show. We go into Feds, which is the, procedural cop show that Andrew's on and we go into picking Daisy as well which is which is Izzy's show um a little bit too and um we just you know there's there's comedy in in what's out there and I think everyone can kind of particularly in this day and age now where it is it's like there's a lot of content and um some of it can be pretty funny right? yeah yeah you guys are doing this all on your own and like it has accomplished a not like you're about to premiere season two at ATX TV Fest. Like that's a pretty big deal for a show that started on a crown crowdfunding site. What would you guys say is the easiest part of doing this and what it has been the most challenging? Well, I mean, I think, you know, <laughs> It's certainly a lot more than just us four sitting here. Um, there's, a, there's a huge effort behind us. And um, the, the great thing is, is that, you know, our, our, our film family kind of, you know, people that we've worked with along the way and continue to work with um, have, have been part of this thing from day one, helped us, um, you know, get it off the ground, um, have been with us and supported us and expanded their roles to, um, to you know, directing and writing and, really become you know the, the 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 dna of this thing and so you know even that being said you know there's not that many of us um and it is it is a big effort on on everyone's part and everybody has to wear a lot of different hats and that's the most difficult part is is trying to stay focused on the creative while you're you know spreading yourself pretty thin but you know again when you're surrounded by friends and people that you trust and um the mood is always very positive and it's always very, you know, can do, how do we do? Um, it's, um, it, it, it gets us through, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's testing, you know, it definitely, you know, mm -hmm. you lose a lot of weight, you lose a lot of sleep <laughs> and you just try to, you try to get through that production and then, um, yeah. You have a few more gray hairs and that's yeah. okay. <laughs> but we do, we have so many amazing, um, people on our, on our, on our team. It's like a family, um, you know, without our, our, the rest of our producers that they're, everyone is just integral to the process. And I guess it's also it, what you were saying is the hardest part. It's also the easiest part because everybody's there for the same reason. So passionate and is, um, just willing to get it done. And that makes it easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But how was it like to play a divorced couple before you guys even get married? Like you go through a pandemic, you have this show, you play a divorced couple, then you get married and then you make another season. Like what has that journey been like? Um, it's been I awesome. I think I'll take this one, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been awesome. I mean, the thing is, I think, you know, James, James and I kind of, we the, well, that's sort of what brought us together, you know. We met on the on the set of the Royals, and we both sort of saw potential to I don't know met, do things together. We love being creative together. We love working together. Where um and so playing uh, a divorced couple was just a lot of fun, really, more than anything. Um, right, Dal? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's it's. It's cool. I think that's what we're playing with with um, both these pairs of couples in the show is um, they're not together anymore, but there still is, you know, an attraction and there still is love and care. And whether or not that's going to result in them ultimately being together, you know, 
is, is kind of beside the point. It's really about the journey of, um, you know, still being there for someone when you don't know if you're meant to actually be together, you know, and you have been together in the past. It's like, it's a complicated thing, but it's a beautiful thing if you can try to make it work. And these characters are messy, but ultimately they're trying to be the best people they can. So they're always trying to repair the damage they've done. Yes. And what would you say was for each of you, your favorite episode or scene from season one? I think our drunk sequences were really fun. Yeah. That we shot here. That was a really, really good, good time for me personally. <laughs> um, and that was, yeah, the the being able to add improv into that sort of a scene as well is really just such a joy to go through that process. Mm -hmm. mm. Freeing. Um, gosh. Mm, come back to me you guys go <laughs> I was I mean there's some stuff um I like when uh you know we have the opportunity to get the four of our characters together uh which you're gonna see a lot more of in season two um as, as when everyone comes together in a group and that gets really fun because you know like we alluded to before um we all know each other so well um and you know that chemistry really translates on screen and to see that kind of firing all cylinders when we're all together at the same time is great and we've seen a little bit of that kind of engagement party it happens at the final uh, episode i really like a lot of the stuff that happens in the final episode of the first season um because you're really it's really setting up where we're going to be in, in season two and so um you have a lot of that kind of dynamic occurring uh, eventually in season two um so i think to me that yeah when when the four of us are all uh together uh having fun there's there's some good stuff in this season that is coming uh to mind right away so i <laughs> look forward to that yeah yeah i think um like the scene in that living room uh between izzy and andrea is definitely definitely up there for me um and then also you know <laughs> the the pillow scene with seth the audition in the very first episode yeah. um yes. you know obviously painful for this guy but uh but to me you know that was such a huge moment because that's one of the that's one of the scenes and scenarios that we've been exposed to in this industry. And we know other people that have been that really sparked. It was like part of the genesis of this whole idea. It was like, this is so absurd that, you know, we at least need to make a short out of it or something, you know? And then on, on set, when we actually shot that scene for the pilot episode, you know, any pilot is very, it's very much an experiment and, and you, you're not a hundred percent sure if what you're doing is going to work. Um, but I remember that day shooting that scene feeling like 100% like this was going to work like this was what we were doing was something that I had never seen before but I really wanted to see and um so it's it was just a special moment and it's it's you know I think the fans have always really responded to it too so yeah so special <laughs> <laughs> it, it really does set the tone for like what the show is going to be about but uh, Alex, Zandra, did you think of your favorite scene yet? Or did you? I, kind of agree? Well, yes, I did think. Um, I think. <laughs> good call. Good call back, Ariana. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. I was like. <laughs> See, um, I think it was the, re the I mean, I have the Redwood, for the Redwood, um, the mushrooms stuff with the boys, I think is just pretty, pretty on the money for me. Um, and just the, and all the stuff at Seth's mum's house. I just think it's so awkward and hilarious and there's just so much of the the, ch the the child within Seth and Jeremy that comes out in these moments where they're together just kind of you know looking for oxygen in whichever way they can and I, I don't know and that all just circles back to to the the point of why we made this and the fact that you know there's there there is so much going on in this next season, which is more of just the four of us together, and there's so much energy just intertwined between all of us, um, which is just a reflection of all the stuff that I love from season one. Yes. So for season two, we're expecting more of you guys together, a bit more of the shows within the show. What else should we expect? Hmm. That you can tell me. You want to kick us off? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, certainly for the second series, I think it gets bigger. Mm -hmm. You could say without giving away spoilers. Yes. Um, there is uh, a lot more drama woven into the second season as well, which is really nice because it really grounds it. 
um, in a really beautiful way. And it adds a whole other like range of sort of issues that particularly I think from the last couple of years of grief and loss and all that sort of stuff that I think people are really going to attach to and really feel quite strongly about. Um, we go all over LA. We really kind of get outside our little bubble, our little bubbles in the second season. So I don't want to tell you anything more because I don't want to give you any spoilers. <laughs> it's, it's it's worth that sort of stuff being a nice surprise. Yes. Are you guys, you're about to premiere it literally in the theater season too. And that's going to be the first time people see it at this TV festival. How do you feel about that? Is it kind of like bringing your baby out in public for everyone to see? <laughs> yes. Yeah. A little bit. Like we're in, we're naked, basically. Um, we have to keep, I have to keep re reminding myself that, you know, just imagine everyone's naked in yes. the audience and then maybe we won't be so, yes, it's definitely daunting. I mean, it's absolutely, like you said, like putting your baby out on display to be seen. But we're also incredibly excited because um, we really believe in the show and we think, you know, the reason behind why we made it, which is to make people feel happy and laugh and like they're not alone. Um, they're not the only ones going through a rough time. Um, that's the whole point of it. And we really do believe in it. We put everything we could into creating that kind of content. And um, we're excited, I think. For yeah. people it's, just, yeah. it's going to be a celebration, you know, uh, as uh, there is, you know, getting it in front of a live audience is, is important to us to kind of get that feedback. But you know, to bring our family together, have us all there together, uh, this filmmaker family of ours to celebrate, you know, getting to this point again, because we were at ATX uh, back in 2018 when we premiered the first episode, of the first season, and we were crowdfunding at that point, and we didn't know where we were going to end up. Hulu was so far away and so many more mountains to climb before we were going to get there. So to come back, it's a full circle moment for us and to see how the show's grown up, just as we've talked about to you today, but also for the audience to see who else is going to be in the show. We've got all these amazing guest stars that are coming in besides the four of us there, you know, we've, we've got Jamie Chung, we've got Brian Greenberg coming in, Jess McNamee, Phoenix, Washington. We've got these people coming in that offer stellar performances uh -huh. that just add a little extra fairy dust on top of, you know, what yeah. you're seeing from us. Um, and, you know, you're going to see that right away in the first episode. And so if you're at ATX or you're able to come, you know, attend the festival and come to our screening, um, you'll see how the show is really leveled up from, from season one right away. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see you guys in ATX. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to me. I'm so excited for you and for me to see season two. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so awesome. much for watching. Thank I you really so much. It. Oh, no problem. Thank you. You guys have a great day. Thanks again. I hope to talk to you soon about this in future projects. Awesome. That's great. Thank okay. you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much.